Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and CJ here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we will be reviewing as much of AEW Rampage as we care to view because there's just some things that just don't matter, like the opening six-man tag team match. Even though we like Jeff Cobb and we like Rocky Romero, that match was meaningless. And the reason that match was meaningless because all of those people have nothing to do with each other going into Forbidden Door. Not one thing. Not one. And you know, back when New, New Japan does it, they'll have a three-on-three -three and one of each participant, or sometimes two of each participating team, they're going to have singles matches coming up at the final of their whatever it is. Yep, and it's sort of a teaser that they do with their tag match. Yes. But they no. use matches as advertisements. For the, you know... For the match that you really want to see, yep. hopefully. But no, no, this is none of this. It's just, we got two teams, throw them in there, open the show. Like, really? Yeah. You know, that's that's about it, you know. And we like Jeff Cobb. Mm -hmm. We like Rocky Romero. Mm -hmm. We like Trent Barretta. Mm -hmm. He could be doing so much more. But I'll be honest with you, Will Ospreay, he just... At one point, he could have been my cup of tea, but the problem is he keeps spilling over. Uh -huh. And the other guy um, of Aussie Open, I, it's, he just keeps showing how much of a rookie he is. If he could have been wrestling 10 years, he's still a rookie. There's, you don't sit there and push somebody to the ropes and then prepare for the shoulder block three steps out. You nah, don't do that. Look you look a little bit off balance, and when they come, boom, bump you, you roll back to the ropes, or you fall down, whichever it's going to be, but you don't look like you're waiting for it. You know, you don't moves and then you don't do moves and then like a hard hit move and then parade. No, go after the pin. That uh, we didn't watch that and we no. knew who was going to win anyway. We did, and you know, Osprey won. You know, just that's just how that go. Is it six man tag match and we knew who was going to win. So. That was just too much. So we skipped the first match. Then we get to the next match. We was going to skip that. Taya Valkyrie versus Trisha Dora. I'm just not a fan of Taya Valkyrie. Me neither. She's a fair weather wrestler. I do not like fair weather wrestlers. When she went against Jade Cargill those two times, you know, she had that look on her face like, ain't this something. But now she gets to stomp Trisha Dora in, and she's just so happy and showboating and whatnot. And... Seeing how she was playing with her food in the ring, I was really inclined to take it to a different level. I was really inclined to think of it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, Trisha Dora, she's gone back to training. She's doing well. I think it's stupid to put her on Rampage or Dynamite, keep her on Ring of Honor, keep her on Ring of Honor. They should, but Tony don't know what he's doing. I mean, he's got enough people working for him where he can have people being exclusively on one show, but he's just, he just sucks. Dynamite. Rampage. Collision. Ring of Honor. 200 wrestlers on your roster. You could divide them up. 50 on each show. Yep. 50 on each show. And instead of trying to do the all-inclusive battle royals and six and eight man or person tag matches and whatnot, you can actually streamline it when you have them broken down like that. You got so many belts, you could have some decent mid-card uh, programs going on. Tag team programs. No, just none of that. Just the wrong people run wrestling companies. Is that simple? The wrong, wrong people, people run all companies, but true let's that. keep it to wrestling. True that. They know how to feed off of you, but they don't know how to feed you. So that match, Trisha Dora is who I focused on because Valkyrie seemed to not be able to work when she needs to work. Trisha Dora works when probably she shouldn't work at all. Some some people you just got to just say, no. Nah, you're not gonna humiliate me and go into a little business of your for your for yourself for at least a little bit. Yeah. You don't just get ran over like that. I can see if it's a enhancement wrestler squash match. I can understand that. You know, get your moves in. You know, the, the main one get their moves in, 
you make your little comeback here or there, get about three or four moves in, then get shut down, and then you get beat after two or three more moves, just to see the basics and then a couple of signatures that they can do, finisher, done. She I can see that. She should have been the way she was against the ROH Women's Champion, Athena, at bottom barrel least. Yes. But it was just playing with her food. Yeah. It wasn't even a squash. It was a, it was a smash them down and scrape them all over the the curb kind of thing, you know. But Adora focusing on her, her forearms have gotten so much better. Yeah, that rolling forearm, that was a chef's kiss. It won't perfect, but I really did like it. You know, everything that she did, it was smooth. And she's showing that she's paying attention in class and she's getting better. And I can't wait to see her. I'm gonna say six months out, but I promise you, no matter how good she get, Tony Khan's gonna use her as an enhancement wrestler at best. That's that's what's messed up, you know. But I can't wait to see one day if she does it, her lariat Tubman. I want yeah. to see what her lariat look like, and I hope it's impressive. I hope it is. I don't want it to look like Okada's. No. Okada, the first time we saw it, it was nasty. And after that, I don't know. I guess the money went to his head and he just said, I ain't got to do it. Well, oh, like Stan Hansen. Ooh, if it was like that. Mm. Speaking of Stan Hansen, that comes in later today. So, um, I obviously tired. She won. Fairweather wrestler. She um I I would she'd be out of my company. She'd be out my company. Because I'd be like, why'd you act like that against Jade, but not like that against Trish? You know? But she won with this cross-leg curb stomp, you know, pin done. Next match, good grief. Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, Karen Jarrett versus Mark Briscoe, Papa Briscoe, and Aubrey Edwards. That was a hot mess. Or as Cornette would say, Aubrey. So, um, and look, Aubrey got heat with me because... She don't know jack about jack when it comes to officiating and how to officiate certain matches, especially a tag team match, and then try to tell others what the rules are when she don't even know what the rules are. And you can look, you can go back in time. You can watch the NWA from 1989, just all of 1989. Watch four tag matches and you'll learn the rules. That's it. You will learn the basic rules. You know, hold the tag rope. So long as you got a hold of the tag rope, and the tag rope can't, should be no more than one to two feet. As long as you're holding that with your hand out, you can make the tag. It's got to be a hand-to-hand tag. All right? It's that simple. The opponent has to attack someone in the ring before they can make the tag. Attack or come into some kind of contact. Some physical damaging contact. All right? You can tag it out as much as you want. A lot of it's like there's a lot of rules, mm-hmm. but once you do them enough and you go over them enough, it's, it's like smooth. it's it's smooth. Yes, very smooth. But she's gonna try to tell others how it's done, and I'm like, no. First of all, nobody has ten seconds, and you got a five count. Once you are the illegal wrestler, you get your warning, get out the ring, get out. You got your warning, and then you got the five count, five seconds. And if they're in that ring. On that fifth count, disqualification. Yeah. If they're getting out of the ring on the fifth count, then it's not a disqualification because they're ending it and they're getting out the ring. Yeah. It's certain little things like that. But let's put that aside. Okay. And let's just focus on the hot mess that this was. Oh. I will say this. It was adorable when she was trying to get around Satin and Singh. That, that was cute. And it's because she kind of squiggled by on the right side. But she look up and Karen's like, I'm already on the other side. I'm I'm done. You know, I'm the black car and ridge racer. I'm I'm already there waiting on you. This match was nothing, nothing, nothing but sports entertainment. That's all it was. Nothing. It more, had entertainment less. value. But it but was it was, poor. A, it was a mess. It, it was it was poor. Both of these girls were so green. It was messing up the dudes in the ring. It just this match was meaningless. It was a this is what you call a throwaway match. This right here is a match you build up for a forbidden door. You train these girls to be wrestlers. You let them, and they do the promos of training, being in the ring, who's training them. Um, they work out every day. 
And then at Forbidden Door, you're going to see what I do in that ring. And all you got to do is give them the absolute basics of pro wrestling. Maybe a good opening match. Yes. It would have been a good opening match. But, you know, let's not let's not do something like that that makes sense, you know, in professional wrestling. Because pro wrestling ain't about making sense. It's about making moves, I suppose. That's, and moments. Yeah, and mo- your moment. You got to have your moment. Your moment. You got to have it. Um, but uh, Aubrey wins with the figure four leg lock. She she did the whole Ric Flair thing, which others would say no, it was a Jay Lethal thing, and you know they don't realize that Flair took it from Landell, no Rogers, and Lethal took it from Flair. Aubrey just took it from Lethal and Jarrett. To be honest with you, they both did they it. Both do it, yeah. But, you know, yeah. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not squabbling over little things like that, you know. History, that's just for people that care. Um, <laughs> so I, I wrote with that ultimate sloppy match. Then we get to the main event, Bandito versus Takeshita Kanosuke. And oh, wait a minute. Are you going to talk about anything about Papa Briscoe? Okay. I'll say this. Papa Briscoe is a much better worker and both of those girls combined <laughs> and a lot better than Taya Valkyrie and a lot better than Jade Cargill. And he was slow, but he was on time. He was on point. He had sports entertainment down. He had his, you know, brutish wrestling down, his old school. Style. Y'all forget wrestling back in the day was a, a battering in the corner. It was... Let me hold you down for this pin and punch you in the stomach while you're getting pinned. <laughs> that's what that's what wrestling was back in the olden olden days. Before that, it was knees and and hammer blows and stuff in the corner until the person just couldn't take no more. You throw them down and pin them. <laughs> you know, usually with a foot on the chest, because getting down there and holding them for the three count meant that you might get rolled over, and they didn't want to risk that. It, it makes somebody that you challenge from the from the stands and say, if you can last three minutes with this person, you know, you get five hundred dollars, and he'd be like, whoa. So yeah, you don't want to get on the mat like that. Mm-hmm. So Papa Briscoe, I thought he did good. Jay Lethal sold his clotheslines beautifully. Well, that one clothesline. I like Papa Briscoe in the ring, but I don't want to see him anymore. I don't want to see him anymore, but he got Sanjay. He <laughs> clotheslined him across the jaw. <laughs> he fell off the apron and onto the floor. I didn't want to mention Papa Briscoe, Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, Mark Briscoe, because they were fine. Oh, okay. They were fine. And I know I I know I, I I literally do not want to just bag on a wrestling company, but this match bagged itself. This match is I wouldn't even have the same thing, just watch the match. And if you can watch this match and feel that it's a good match, do not ever comment positively on any wrestling. I don't even care if you're correct. <laughs> just leave it alone. It's just that simple that this match sucked, it stunk, and it could have been something completely different. You know, it would have been better if these girls was in the corner of a tag match and they both cheated for their team and it wasn't enough, so they would go into training. And even if that match was going to happen three or four or five weeks down the line, at least get some training and say, we're going to build up to it. Aubrey could have easily been like, look, I was in this match. I get it now. I'm going to be a little bit more mindful. I'm going to be a better referee. And that will lead people up to see, wow, what are you going to do? It's not like that. It's just not like that. No, it's not. Is there anything else I need to comment on? No, I just I just wanted to, pop up to comment on him and his clothesline. That's all. And, and you liked it. Yeah. It was, it, was a good, it was a good clothesline. It was a stiff arm lariat. It was a good one. You know? But I don't want to see him in the ring anymore. He gets the business. He understands it. And and that's 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 cool. That's cool. Let me get to the main event. I could have written stuff down for this main event. Bandito versus Takeshita Konosuke. I could have. 
this was a lot. I would have been writing down things forever and I'd just be going over it. I would have been, I would have been basically, I just have to commentate the whole match, which I could, and I would have done a lot better than all three of them fools up there combined. <laughs> I would have. I would have blew them out the water. Um, but I'm going to say this. Um, this was a very good match. I would give this match four stars easy. Easy. Not five, not four and a half, but four. Not ten. You know, that that's, that's where I would have been with this match. This was a dang good match. I liked it. To I, I could watch it again, to be honest with you. Takeshita um, has been improving a lot. But put them down right there. She got the. She got quiet because she picked up the Q-tips from one spot and then didn't know how to put them back in the same spot. All center, and I didn't want them to go sliding and things go catastrophe. I know that's why you don't mess with stuff so they don't go sliding. I needed them. I would have gave you a Q-tip. You could have asked me for the Q-tip. You were talking. Yeah, but I could still reach. Be like, honey, give me Q-tip. I'm like, all right. I give you a Q-tip. I was trying not to let the entire world know I'm digging in my ear. No, 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 no. They got to know you're digging in <laughs> your ear. They do not need to know. That, that she's digging in her ear right now. Right now, she's digging in her ear as I commentate right now. She's twisting to the left. Would you shut the... up? What <laughs> the hell? <laughs> go, 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 go. Oh, no, I'm going I'm to get you. You'll sit there and give me that quiet time. So, look, look. You, you want to talk about the match, too? I was talking about the best. I had to get my damn ear. Um, Takeshita has improved since he's got there steadily. And with his heel turn, I just like it. I just like his heel turn. I like his work. Now, Bandito, I think, is a good wrestler. But you can't really see everything that he can do unless he's not wrestling another lucha wrestler. If he's wrestling another lucha libre wrestler, then they're going to be walking the ropes, flipping, jumping, flying, from the rafters on one leg, trapeze, the greatest of ease, all that stuff. But when he's not wrestling another Lucha Libre wrestler, it's you see basics, you see pacing, you see all that, and you get to see the what's good about him. I like watching Bandito in the same light. You know, the whole Lucha Libre thing, uh, it just it, look, when he does the high flying stuff, I get people like it. You like what you like. It is all good. But here's the thing. You got to... Let's see if I can get a phone call now. You can get a phone call now? Is that what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can control who calls me. This We're professional, everybody. We are outright professional. So... <laughs> so... I, I, I'm, I'm, hold up. I like watching Bandito like this. If he's doing all the flips and stuff, people like what they like. That's cool. It's all good. I ain't got a problem with the flips. I just got a problem when the flips happen. You know, I miss when a wrestler would be dazed or stunned and somebody would go for a big move like that. Now it's knock them out the ring and they stand there for three to four seconds waiting for the person to die. Just looking up at them. While wow, the person about to die takes a deep breath. Test the wind speed, the barometric pressure, say a prayer, and then jump. Yep. And I can't help but think, move out the way, man. Move, move out the way. I, I would move out the way. You know, when um, Bandito went for that uh, diving, moon, uh, standing moonsault to the outside of the ring, I'm like, you know, Takeshita could have just moved, but he was just looking up at him, and then he had to catch him. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> then there are a few wrestlers, I'm not going to name names now, who they climb up there, and they do the move. Just get up there and do it. And it looks good. It looks a lot better than having to wait five and ten seconds while the people down there get just so so they can catch you. Yup. The idea is to make it look real. That's the idea. And you can make these big dives look real. You mm -hmm. just, you just, that's when, that's when the ring psychology come in. Where you're trying to get people to believe what you're doing. You know? And in this match, I will say this, that these two, for the most part, it was believable for the most part. Um, they don't need to do certain spots again. When Bandito countered near the end and spiked Takeshita 
on top of his shoulders. Yeah, luckily he protected himself and yes. took his head so it wasn't a catastrophe. Yes, I've seen green wrestlers. And, I would, and if I was a wrestler and I've only been a, in, in the sport for like six months, I would have broke my neck. Because you could tell what those wrestlers are because they start getting flipped like that in that Hudakanrana style or Frankensteiner style. They ain't going to tuck their heads like that. They're going to look up because they want to see where they're going before they make the, the, the correct action to protect themselves. But the, that move was so short to the ground, they wouldn't have had time to, he wouldn't have had time to protect himself. He would have looked up, crack, neck done. You know, so that shows how much of a professional Takeshita is. Mm -hmm. Now he might, now he comes from DDT Pro Wrestling in Japan, Dramatic Dream Team, mm -hmm. okay? They do a lot of fool stuff there. So most likely he's done some embarrassing things that the sport of professional wrestling would never allow. But I throw that aside because I want to see what he is here. And just be just to be clear, just because he was in a company that did fool ass stuff and he might have done some fool ass stuff, doesn't mean he wasn't properly trained to take care of himself. Correct. And you certainly saw that uh Friday night on Rampage. I, I like that he was able to do that. And it brings me to the next part. Um, Bandito went for that avalanche fall away slam. He went for that. And he was stopped by Takeshita. Who bit him. Yes, but it didn't look like a bite because he was biting the side of the mask strap. So, uh, it was a bite. It was still a bite. See, the light's a good bite. He felt that in his soul because you know that it's stitched into the lining of his DNA. Just because it was a biting. The DNA, yeah. You know, okay. Okay. The, the, the lucha and the mask is part of the soul. They yeah. die with it. That's what they say. They get buried with it. He, he felt he, that in the helices of his DNA. All right, then. <laughs> Triple helix. The, the biting one. Okay. And <laughs> I'm trying to help Takeshita. <laughs> Takeshita and Bandito climb to that top, and I'm thinking... What are y'all finna do? And in any indie promotion, they would be chanting, please don't die. And so they're up there, and then Takeshita gives him a Western Lariat, an avalanche Western Lariat that flips him into the ring for a two count. Best finish that could have been done for a two count. It should have been the end of the match. Mm-hmm. At that juncture, it went indie. And the crowd was kind of, you could hear the murmurs like, what in the world? Huh? You can hear them. You know, you don't want to hear murmurs in the crowd. <laughs> you don't want to hear murmurs. And then next, you know, they do some setups and he got that epic rolling forearm strike to the back of Bandito's head. A nice little pop on that when uh, I think Takesha stepped his own abdomen. It's a small little trick Jerry Lawler would do it. Yeah. So, at that point, you can hear the crowd. Oh, crap, it's over. Mm -hmm. You can hear them. Takesha got in the corner and the crowd just, uh, you can hear the groans. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Y'all hearts are breaking in real time. <laughs> And Takeshita milked it too. He milked the last minute of that yes, match. Yes, he did. He milked it, and he uh, what's he called it? The power drive knee. Okay, he hit that. It looked devastating, mm -hmm. and Bandito was pinned on that. And yes, that makes sense. That Larry off the top. That should have been it. It should have been the finisher. But Takeshita looked good. He looked. He didn't look menacing because he, he just can't. He just, he just looked menacing. He looked he like looked he just good. don't care about your life. Yeah, he looked serious. He looked like he arrived in a clean black SUV. Yep, with um, shades, with, with the black shades, shades. ready to come in and annihilate someone's entire family. And Don Couch didn't get involved. So he was able to be maintain his status and maintain his baddiness without having... He didn't grab any tights to cheat. He wasn't raking eyes. He just picked him apart. Yep. That's not something that you really see from the bad guys in wrestling period, but especially AEW. It's like they don't know how to be bad without 
eyes, ball shot, holding tights, or the dumbass manager getting involved? A simple mean look and vile gestures can be way more than just some words or a nut shot. It can mean a lot because there was no cheating in this match. And see, all the other heels, nut shot, eye guys, look at the crowd, smile. Yeah, I messed up your boy. There was no smiling from Takeshita. He did. It's very good. important. Yep, he did. Like, good. I'm serious about my business. That's why we like Takeshita so far. I like this role. I like his look. I like his music. It's, mm. It almost reminds me of the the ending theme I made for Pain and Agony Wrestling. <laughs> Murder Death March. Yeah. So, you know. Got Doom music coming out. I love that. Remember the Briscoe's uh, heel theme mm-hmm. music? Love that too. Yep. You know, Jay Lethal's heel music. Yeah. I like that too. The Briscoe's heel music is the biggest song you're going to drive into the backwoods and never be seen again. <laughs> <laughs> <That's what laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't think of it. I didn't think of it that way. Okay. Oh, all right. So, look, that was that that was AEW Rampage. We hope y'all enjoyed the commentary and whatnot. Hey, leave a comment and all that stuff. We're going to get up out of here, and later on tonight, we'll try to watch Collision and probably commentate on that tomorrow or watch it tomorrow and commentate on it uh, afterwards. But, uh, you know, no spoilers in the comment section for anyone that would leave a comment. Um, So with that, you know, y'all be safe, be chill, and we'll see you next time.